Neil O'Leary was sitting on a gate in the sunshine, daydreaming quite happily, when tick, 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 he became aware of a sharp sound coming from the field behind him. Now what on earth can that be? Neil wondered to himself. It's too loud to be a grasshopper. It's too quiet to be a bird. Tick, 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 it went. Neil O'Leary swung his legs over the gate and turned around. He blinked in astonishment. There, in the long grass of the field, was the tiniest man Neil had ever seen, <laughs> no higher than his boot. The tiny man had his back to Neil, but Neil could see that he was dressed all in green, with a long white feather in his cap. A tiny leather shoe lay before him on a rock, and he was a banging away at it with a tiny stone hammer. Neil's eyes lit up. A leprechaun! A real, live leprechaun! Neil licked his lips greedily. Every tiny leprechaun had a huge pot of gold hidden somewhere, and, as everybody knew, if you caught hold of a leprechaun and squeezed him tightly enough, he would have to tell you where his treasure was buried. Quietly, Neil O'Leary got down from the gate. Tick, 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 went the leprechaun's hammer. Quietly, Neil O'Leary crept through the grass. Tick, tick, tick went the leprechaun's hammer. Quietly, Neil O'Leary reached out with his large, meaty hands. Gotcha! cried Neil O'Leary, and he squeezed and squeezed the wriggling leprechaun with all of his might. Oof! cried the leprechaun. Let's me go, you big bully. Tell me where your gold is, and I will, boomed Neil. I can't tell you anything while you're squeezing the breath out of me, the leprechaun guessed, looking rather purple. Oops! Sorry! blustered Neil, and relaxed his grip. That's better, wheezed the leprechaun, taking gulps of air. Now, put me down, and I promise I'll show you where my gold is hidden. A broad grin spread across Neil's face as he lowered the leprechaun back down to the grass. The leprechaun can't break his promise, he chuckled. No, grumbled the leprechaun rather crossly. And my gold is buried under here. He left a few steps into the middle of the field and pointed a clump of dandelions. You'll need a spade, mind. The leprechaun added thoughtfully. You'll have to dig quite a way down. Neil's face fell. But I haven't got a spade with me, he said plumly. What shall I do? Why don't you tie your handkerchief around the dandelions so you don't forget where the gold is buried, the leprechaun suggested. Then hurry back home and fetch a spade. I promise on my word of honor that I won't untie the handkerchief. Neil's face brightened once again. What a great idea, he beamed. He fumbled in his pocket, brought out a rather grubby red silk handkerchief, and tied it around the clump of dandelions. It waved at him in a breeze like a cheerful flag. Thank you, Mr. Leprechaun, Neil remembered to say politely. You've been mighty helpful. Then, in a few strides, he was back over the gate and away home, humming merrily. As soon as Neil had grabbed the biggest spade he could find in the yard shed, he set off back to the field at once. All the way down the lane, he daydreamed of what he would do with the gold. But when Neil O'Leary reached the gate, he stopped, stone still, and his mouth hung open. He dropped the spade and scratched his head. Well, blow me down, gasped Neil. All over the field, thousands of red silk handkerchiefs were tied onto clumps of dandelions and fluttering in the breeze. And Neil could hear the sound of leprechaun laughter floating over the grass on the wind. So Neil O'Leary never got his pot of gold after all. But that is how he came to own the most successful silk handkerchief shop in Ireland. Hmm. Did you like that story? <laughs>